In this lesson, we'll be using folders in a setup. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create folders in a setup for organization and use drag and drop to move toolpaths into folders. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's talk about ways in which we can help organize our browser when we're creating toolpaths. First thing that I'm going to do is minimize my models and focus solely on my setups. If we expand our multi-axis setup too, notice that our toolpaths currently need to be regenerated, so I'm going to select the setup and use Ctrl G to regenerate those. Once they've been regenerated, let's take a look at the fact that we have patterns, and inside the patterns area, we have the toolpaths that were patterned. For example, we have our drilling operations, we have our milling operations, the pockets that we were creating, and so on. So each of these are already contained within a folder and we can activate those as well. And we can deactivate those and go back and activate the top setup. If we select all of our patterns and go to our setup dropdown, we can create a new folder. Notice that the new folder is contained inside of the first pattern. The folder can be activated and it can be dragged around. If we drag it all the way to the top, Notice that it's currently called folder five, but we can rename this. Let's call this roughing setup two. So now what we can do is we can drag toolpaths into this folder. If we expand it. We now have our first roughing operation. And then we have our outside profile, which is a finishing operation. We have top pocket. We have spot drill. We have several other operations in here. So if we want to create another new folder, we want to first start by selecting the entire setup. We can create a new folder and notice where it puts this folder all the way at the bottom. I'm going to put it just above my patterns and I'm going to rename folder six to be toolpath patterns. From here, I'm going to shift select all four patterns and drag them together into my toolpath patterns folder. So again, this is just a way that we can help organize large programs inside of our browser. Nothing that we've done so far has contained a large number of toolpaths to the point where we'd have to scroll up and down in the browser, but it can very quickly get to that point. So it's a good idea to just understand how to create these folders and how to move things around. If we activate a folder, what we're doing and talking about is looking at just the toolpaths that are contained within. For example, if we simulate and we play through this, we're looking at just our roughing operation. If we expand our models and we hide our soft jaw fixture, we rotate this around. You can see that what we're doing is we're playing back through our roughing operation and everything else is shown grayed out. So this is another way that we can help look at and identify various parts of a program, a setup, a toolpath, a group of operations, and quickly validate them. If we activate the toolpath patterns, for example, we're going to come in and again, we're starting with the raw stock. So you'll notice that we see a lot of collisions, but what it's allowing us to do is explore just those toolpath motions. So if we don't have the stock shown and we just want to look at those toolpaths, we can see them on the screen and see exactly what each one is doing. So the functionality that goes along with creating these folders helps us organize, but also helps us speed up the process of doing some of the validation work as well. From here, I'm not going to create any other additional folders, but you can certainly add a few more to simplify the multi-axis setup. For me, I'm going to go back and minimize the model section. And notice that I have all my setups in here and I'm going to double click the mouse wheel to fit the screen on my link part, then save my file before moving on to the next step.